today I'm gonna do a lifetime behavior and on Wednesday, I'll try to give you some modern account about, about um, uh, rotation vectors. And then, you know, every day, uh, like today and also Wednesday, I'm gonna tell you various uh, important open problems according to my opinion. Um, and mostly they're related to quantitative results, you know. I, I think I've been repeatedly telling you those. And then, as I said, you know, Friday, we don't have classes, you know, just finish up your work and submit it, whatever, just problems, and then or do the evaluation form and stuff like that. And afterwards, I do hope you have uh, a fruitful and uh, nice summers. Okay. Right, so um, as always, stop me, discuss with me about various um, aspects of the problems and stuff like that. I'm very happy to do so. Okay, um, so let me just put it right away. What we what do we care about? We care about uh, lifetime behavior. So uh, behavior of the PD, of the solution to the PD, UXT, ST goes to infinity. Uh, this is uh, one of the most important questions in PDE, you know, ranging from, you know, what we are doing, Hamilton Jacobi, to parabolic, to wave, to dispersive uh, GR. Uh, in all of those aspects um, of geometric analysis, um, the behavior of solutions at infinity or near singularities are always a, a really important uh, uh, aspects, you know, after well postness, once you have well postness, you would want to pursue to understand do you have stability or you have sort of like attractors or some sort of like um, behavior at infinity and, and, and you know, and um, or reaction diffusions. Uh, all of those equations, this is, you know, one of the central goals. Um, so for us, we care about the behavior of. Uh, the hamilton jacob equation um, right you know this is in the periodic setting i'll, I'll say that this doesn't cover everything uh, you know uh, this is just one setting okay and then this one corresponding to the ergodic problem right the ergodic problem reads that h of x dvx equals to C naught in the torus, okay? And, um, you know, it's clear that from the ergodic problem, you can see that, um, that uh, Vx plus C naught of T uh, minus, I always feel confused with the side, is a separable solution. to the hamilton jacobi equation, right? You know, uh, separable in, in space and time. So um, the goal, the, the, you know, the theorem we're gonna prove today, I'm gonna write it right over here, is that, um, you know, uh, ST goes to infinity. We're gonna have that we have, again, under the quick cam setting, right? Everything is nice, it's periodic. Um, uniformly convex, uh, stuff like that. We have the conversion result um, that um, uxt plus c naught t gonna converge uniformly to v uh, in tn where v is a solution to the ergodic problem. Okay, so that's the theorem we're gonna prove today. Um, uh, again, this result only hold true in um, uh, under certain assumptions. In general, it might fail, uh, but I don't. I, I, I am not going to come uh, too much into that. Um, our goal is just to prove this result. Okay, that's we have this conversion, um, and V is a solution to the problem. What I want to emphasize right away here that's what the main difficulty. Uh, that uh, what is from the algorithmic problem is that uh, note that E might have a lot of solutions, right? 
and that's that's what makes it dif difficult because you have you expect that your solution going to convert to some stationary solution you know essentially solution of the algorithmic problem right however the problem is that in the limit there can be too many possible choices you know so it's not clear whether you're going to converge to a good limit or not or you can think about it in terms of dynamical system roughly speaking what you have is that you have so many possible attractors or so many possible places to converge to and it's not clear at the beginning whether you're going to converge to one of them or not okay so that's sort of why um, it's interesting uh, this problem was um, uh, you know what postness theory um, for hamilton jacob equation was done in 1980 uh, around that uh, but it took 20 more years to prove this kind of conversion result um, the proof I'm going to present to, uh, to you today is going to be by Fate. Okay, so the this this proof is by Fate uh, using uh, precisely dynamical system, uh, but also that there are, there are others uh, other proofs. Uh, you know, after Fate, there was a proof by Bar Suganidis by using sort of PDE. And then there were some other results that was improvement of, of Fatih's uh, proof is by, um, by, uh, by uh, Davini, Sikononfe, Ishii, and then, uh, and then uh, uh, you know, um, our group came up with a quite a general PD proof that works for first and second order equation that was by Cagnetti, Gomez, Mitake, and myself, whatever. Um, and by coincidence, I just gave a talk on, on last time behavior of second order equations last week, and I'm gonna give the same talk this week at a different university. But anyway, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the proof I presented in those seminars are totally different with what I'm giving you today. But today it's really gonna be using dynamics, okay? Uh, so it's really uh, using dynamics and essentially attractors right you know weak attractor that's sort of we have been talking about um and then along the way i'll, I'll tell you uh I'll, I'll tell you what are the main obstacles and what's the interesting point and let me make a remark before going into the proof is that um know that this is not the most general framework okay so um so this is a good framework a, a very nice framework, but um, it doesn't cover everything, okay? Every important direction. In a uh, lifetime behavior, Uh, of Hamilton Jacob equations. Um, there are some very important directions that are not covered here. Let me give you some examples like um, in, in the equations that it can be singular or, or, or can be determined in, 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 in non-compact domain. So if H is singular in X in P or, 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 or if the problem is uh, set in a uh, non-compact. I mean, surely there was some results by Ishii for non-compact domains uh, uh, based upon the works of Fati, but that was um, under certain set of assumptions. But, um, you know, some, you know, um, so if those are the case that if H is singular or the problem defined non-compact domains and what I'm covering here is not going to be overlap with some directions I mentioned here. And for example, here, I mean, I can mention some, some important directions like um, forced mean curvature flow. If, if, you know, under radio symmetric setting, it can be transformed to Hamilton-Jacob equations, but this is not covered. Or 
um, you know, coagulation, fragmentation equations, stuff like that. There are some of you here who have been working on those uh, directions. And um, what you see here is that what I'm covering today um, is non-overlapping with, with those directions. Uh, so, you know, um, this is not the end game. This is not like one result that covers everything. Okay. Uh, questions or concerns for me up to this point? Okay, great. So let's uh, let's do the results again. I recall here on the left panel just the optimal control formula and the equivalent between uh, being a uh, weak cam solutions and a viscosity solutions. What is important is is I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use uh, uh, this uh, optimal control formula. No, let, let me just write down here. Um, so uh, so the key point I'm using today key points. Let me tell you right away the two key points and then and then and then and then we go with that, right? The first key point is that yes, you xt equals to infimum of all parts. Um, gamma t equals to x of the cost functions. Uh, plus the, the running cost and the terminal cost, which is G. So right, G is the initial data. That this is not surprising, right? I mean, we have been using that, and then we surely say that there exists a minimize a minimizer, right? Minimizing curve. Say so, uh, C, that is C K, right? And uh, C T equals to X such that um, you actually we have equality. So that's the first important point. Again, the first important point is not surprising. Okay. Uh, there's this one tiny bit of this that that we are using here. Uh, that uh, that uh, there's a remark in this first important point. I want to say is that we have conservation of energy as usual, right? So we have T maps to H of C T. C, uh, let's say it's S. S maps to H of C S. Um, uh, D U C S. Uh, uh, yeah, D U is uh, uh, hold on. Um, yes, D U is P. I'm sorry. <laughs> is constant, right? So that's uh, that's an important point that we are using for S in zero T. Okay. So that's the first thing I'm using. Now, let me tell you right away, that's the second point I'm using and then you can see the proof, okay? Uh, you know, never mind about the proof, the proof is there. So the second point that is really important is that we are, we are using, so far, I mean, there's, there's, there's nothing new here, right? I mean, uh, we are just sort of like rewriting um, uh, the minimizing problem. Um, that's just sort of like classical, Hamilton Jacobi and uh, calculus of variation. The second point that was one point we proved last time was that uh, we recall that, I mean, not last time, few uh, you know, quite a while ago, recall that um, the matter set is kind of a uh, weak attractor set, right? Okay, that's the first thing. And then the matter set is, uh, it's uh, is a subset of the uh, C not energy level of of our um, um, of our Hamiltonian, right? This is sort of like so. It's a weak attractor set uh, to be to be made precise, but uh, but uh, you know again, this is very important, right? Uh, and then. Um, but also that is is lying on the on the C not energy level of, of the Hamiltonian. Uh, this is also you know uh, it's there. Um, now let me make it precise what I meant here. So now for epsilon greater than zero, let's just take uh, let uh, then let um, 
let me follow my notations. W epsilon. W epsilon just to be uh, 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 or xp so that I have uh, c naught minus epsilon is less than equals to h of less than. Yeah, let me write in a better way. W epsilon is just the H inverse of C naught minus epsilon to C naught plus epsilon, right? Okay, so I'm just gonna take um, energy level nearby, nearby C naught, right? Then we know that the matter set is a subset of W epsilon, right? And W epsilon is open. So by the weak attractor set, what it meant is that um, then uh, there exists a time t depending on this choice of epsilon, right? And this is what I said uh, earlier. This is not quantitative. This is very just just qualitative results. What how big is t is not known. Uh, such that uh, we would have that uh, you know, for t greater than this big t greater equals then then the then the minimizing curve, um, uh, you know, is going to be getting inside this this attractor set at some point, right? Then there exists S in zero t such that I should have that um, C S D U of C S maybe S bar S bar is going to be sitting inside this attractor set. Right, so that that's really important. This is, you know, the second point. Uh, the first point is not new. The second point is the key observation of Fate. Um, it looks remarkably simple, but what it tells you is is sort of like uh, is concerning last time, right? Because we are we 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 are interested in the last time behavior, and we see that as time gets larger and larger and larger, uh, there should be some point. Uh, CS bar DU of CS bar gonna be closer to the attractor set, right? And in this case, it's chosen to be W epsilon. And if we think about this, like not right away, but if we think about this very carefully, days after days after days of sort of like um, uh, thinking carefully, right? And from here, actually, I can claim right away that we are done. Okay? Writing down the proof text time but 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 this is the key point that has us to be done because because of the fact that not just at this point um, what is remarkable here is that i only have the existence of one point s bar so that uh, so that s s bar uh, this this um, this uh, vector is in w epsilon right but moreover because of conservation of energy but uh, uh, moreover Uh, so, well, I mean, maybe let me write better in a better way. So this implies that H of C S bar, D U C of S bar is gonna be between C naught minus epsilon to C naught plus epsilon, right? Okay, so just one point um, getting into the to 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 the neighborhood, but because of conservation of energy, it implies that all points got to get into, <laughs> into the neighborhood. Okay, that's, that's what is remarkable. So, you know, because of conservation of energy, this implies, again, this is, this is actually the key points, you know, of, of all fatty observation. You see, we can describe it in just uh, one paragraph that we have h of cs du of cs is going to get thing inside all of c not minus c not is going to be less than epsilon for all s okay right that that's sort of like what determines again okay now why why do i claim that we are done. 
I mean, roughly speaking, right? Uh, I, I, you're gonna see the proof. That it's it's going longer, but 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 the key point here is that you see, I'm starting from a time t that's large enough. Maybe let me draw a picture here. I'm starting from a time t bigger than t epsilon here, right? And I declare that if we find a minimizing curves going backward, uh, c s here. We are always, you know, um, you know, this curve. I mean, going in a in a CSDU CSY, it's going to be always inside a W epsilon neighborhood, right? And I have H of CSDU CS is close to the energy level C naught. And if you recall the PD, right? The PD we have U T plus H of X D U equals to zero, right? So what it means, sorry. What it means here, uh, uh, what it means here from from these two relations that I can I can confirm that at the end of the day, for t large enough, I should have that u x t u t x t um, is sort of like c naught minus. Uh, um, is is sort of like minus c not plus or minus epsilon, right? So I have been able to deduce from here. The key point is that if t is large enough, I know that my time derivative it's getting very close to minus c not, right? And and you know if I let time goes to infinity, then more or less I'm done. Because, because if you compare the two equations here, the first equation I have h of x du here, right? Same as the second equation, h of x dv. And what I'm saying is that if I can compare ut with minus c naught in certain ways, right? If they are getting close to each other, then by stability the results of viscosity solution, I'm done. Um, so it's, it's remarkable. Uh, it's just one, one, simple but but remarkable observation saying that once one of the point getting closer to uh, the matter set but in this case because I care about the energy level that tells me that all the points along the optimal trajectory is going to get it getting inside that that neighborhood okay so that that's the key idea I, I think I'm done with describing the key ideas um, questions concerns before we really get thing into the proof Okay, yeah, so you see, I mean, this took, um, this took experts 20 years to prove the results, right? But um, it's not trivial. I mean, without using the insight from dynamical system at this time, I mean, later on we have totally different PD proofs that are um, using the nonlinear joint method and stuff like that, that's sort of like um, viewing the problem through different lenses. Um, but at this point, it's really, really that key insight of, of dynamics about which attractor sort of like helps us to, to prove uh, this very delicate result, okay? Um, right, so uh, exactly on the left panel, I just uh, I just recall again the, um, the lemma, right? I mean, I, uh, yeah, so I messed up my notation. So um, T epsilon is the same, uh, as little t epsilon, okay? Uh, uh, so the first lemma on the left panel, um, just telling me that if I'm taking a neighborhood, right, then, then I'm, gonna, um, I'm gonna get inside this neighborhood if time is large enough. Um, and um, yeah, here I'm taking a closed neighborhood, but you know, it doesn't matter. You, you can make it open if you take two epsilon or something like that, right? Um, and this choice of W epsilon is wonderful. I, um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you see that the conservation of energy plays a big role here, right? Um, um, and, and that's pretty much it. Again, the the L curly L tilde is just the projection map mapping from. Let me recall it to you, right? We are taking from X V the uh, to uh, 
to xp then curly l tilde of xv is gonna just map it to xp so what's gonna, it's gonna be is uh, x p p is du remember right so it's a generalized um, momentum uh, and this is dvl xv In case you forget that's that's map. Um, yeah, so so it's it's really remarkable. It's really telling us that you know if one point get inside and the whole curve get inside. Right. Um I I yeah, you know, I'm not aware of how um how to get a, a quantitative result, however. So this is a to me it's an open problem and important because uh, uh, because uh, um, in dynamics or, or, or algorithmic theory, I mean, if you look in, in algorithmic theory or in probability at this moment, what is also very important is to get certain quantitative results out of certain algorithmic limits. So, um, you know, like always, if you do um, certain scalings or you know, like if you do certain uh, results, if you have good mixing, so stuff like that, then often you have really good um, control on how fast, you know, certain quantities converge to a limit. Uh, in general, this is quite a vague problem, but, but here I can formulate it very clearly, right? Because the open problem that I care about, I mean, maybe people, others don't care, but at least I care uh, that, um, you know, like, uh, how how to quantify uh, t epsilon in terms uh, in terms of epsilon, right? Uh, for for this specific problem, it looks very simple, but I really want to quantify it because it helps us to see how fast do we go into um into the near this C not energy level, okay? Um, and, okay, so I, I just record exactly here. I mean, uh, exactly that we have a minimizer um, and, and, and we have that. So uh, if I assume furthermore that, uh, that, that DU XP exists, right? Again, I don't know whether it exists or not, but if I assume furthermore, um, at, at that point it exists, then, then we can also have that DUXT is DV of gamma gamma dot T, right? And exactly that at the point of differentiability, we have this this uh, uh, this property, okay? So uh, so what is out from this um, discussion is that um, for T greater than equals to T epsilon, if, uh, U is differentiable at xt. Then we have that um, h of x du xt um, minus c naught is less than equals to epsilon. And also this also implies that u t of xt plus c naught less than equal to epsilon. Okay, so it is getting really stable, right? So uh, that's the first part of it. And um, now, I mean, you see that the constant C naught is floating around without any, um, uh, I mean, it's not so important, right? Because we essentially it's just a constant. So this is typically what people do in the theory that we do normalization. Just to get rid of C naught, so, right? So we can, with the loss of generality, we can assume that uh, C naught equals to zero, because otherwise, you can just uh, look at the new Hamiltonian H tilde equals to H um, minus C naught. Then the then the with the new Hamiltonian H tilde, the ergodic constant is going to be zero, and you do that. So I mean, it's it's not going to be. Um, not gonna be a big deal, okay? That's exactly what I write uh, here. Um, 
so when when c not equals to zero then uh then you know we just uh, we uh we uh now need to show i mean because there's no normalized constant anymore right so we just need to show that u x t gonna converge uniformly to some v of x as t goes to infinity and v solves the ergodic problem h of x d v equals zero right because um because of normalization the 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 constant on the on the right now is zero okay um so as i said i mean roughly speaking we are done but uh, how do we put those into into a rigorous proof here's a way i mean i'm trying to again uh, respect fatty's book trying to make it um consistent uh we have actually different ways to do the proof once you see the inside but let's just do it okay so um so let's do it uh, with already the the key intuition um the first thing is that we're gonna uh take v to be a solution to the algorithmic problem okay and then uh you you take c large you can take c to be um, l infinity of g g is the initial data to the cauchy problem plus uh, l infinity of v if you want uh, then by subtracting a constant v minus c It's going to be less than equal to gx, less than equal to vx plus c, right? Now you run the Cauchy problem, so so run the uh, by comparison principle, right? So you run the Cauchy problem. By comparison principle, you have that the 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 the, the inequalities are being preserved, right? Um, V is the solution to the stationary problem. You assume that C naught is zero. So when you run the Cauchy problem, uh, it's still gonna be Vx minus C, right? This is a stationary solution to the equation. Uh, run the Cauchy problem, the, the middle term, we have Uxt, right? That's the solution to the Cauchy problem. The right term is still Vx plus C, okay? Um, so we 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 have that. Uh, then we 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 got that uh, u is bounded, right? So then we get u is bounded, and also that you know by coercivity and other things we have proved earlier. I'm just gonna skip it that the gradient and the time derivative is also bounded. So. So that's a good a priori estimates because that allows us to now using compactness to you know pass the limit right. Um, um, so uh, so once I have everything is bounded, you see that I can uh, use as elastically, just a standard thing, um, to find a sequence the n goes to infinity. Uh, so that I have, uh, you know, just along this sequence, u x d n gonna converge to u infinity, x. Okay. Uh, okay. So this is only, only along a subsequence. T n going to infinity, right? Um. And now I'm gonna, you know, actually our goal is gonna be to prove u x t converge uniformly to u infinity x. That's gonna be our actual goal, right? Okay. Um, um, so by the above lemma, right, we have that at differentiable points, surely for 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 when okay. So for uh, for n large, so that dn is greater than equals to t epsilon, then we always have, uh, because u is differentiable almost everywhere, right? So we always have this inequality for almost everywhere x in the torus, right? 
Um, so, uh, you know, remember that because the convexity almost everywhere is equivalent to being uh, a viscosity subsolution. Maybe let me recall this. So um, there's a key point here that uh, as H is convex in P, we have this very important property that H of X du X dn is less than equals to epsilon almost everywhere in the torus. This is equivalent to the fact that L is um, uh, dominated from above by uh, uh, epsilon. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, is this is sorry, equivalent to um, u and uh, ux uh, is dominated from above by l uh, plus epsilon, okay? And this is also equivalent to the fact that h of x du x tn is less than equals to epsilon in the viscosity sense. Okay, so this is really based upon the convexity and I'm, I'm using that. Uh, this doesn't work for for a super solution property. This only works for a sub solution property, okay? Uh, because convexity is we have to use Jensen inequality. It's one sided kind of estimate, right? So, um, you know, then once we have the sub solution property, we can pass the limit, right? You know, and and you can pass to the limit either also, you know, you can also use the fact that U is dominated by L plus epsilon as well. So, you know, either way, um, when you pass the limit, you get that U infinity inherits the property, right? So, you know, it's sort of true also in the viscosity sense. So that's why it's, it's beautiful, but this is only for sub-solution property, okay? So um, let me make a remark here that u epsilon um, inherits u infinity, I'm sorry, the, uh, the sub-solution property beautifully. Uh, but but uh, the super-solution property doesn't follow. this line of argument, okay? In other words, what I'm saying here about, about this point, uh, this, this sort of, it's, this sort of set of claim, so I'm, I'm about to put a box around it now. That red box is only for sub-solution property, okay? Anyhow, uh, at least it's not too bad. We have been able to conclude that uh, we have been able to conclude that uh, u infinity is a subsolution to the equation. And then now, uh, I guess I have to speed up. Uh, uh, okay. Um, so 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 far we get that u infinity is a subsolution, right? And because it's a sub-solution to the, our equation, right? If you run the equation with respect to time, uh, it's it's always it's it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be always less than equals to that, right? Because that's just a sub-solution property. So you would have the tt of u infinity is always less than equals to u infinity, because again, you start with a sub-solution, you run the equation, it's gonna be always less than equal to the sub-solution, and from this, actually, you get more, right? If you put in uh, for t greater than or equal to zero and you do ts of tt of u infinity, it's going to be less than equal to ts of u infinity for s greater than or equal to zero as well. Uh, so uh, you, you're going to have ts plus t of u infinity is less than equal to ts of u infinity. And this means that you have the map s maps to ts u infinity is. Uh, decreasing, okay? So that's sort of what you have, okay? Um, 
Now, I'm gonna claim that from here, we can actually imply that, not that U infinity is just a sub-solution, it's gonna be also a whole solution. How do we do that? Um, okay, so by, um, by passing to a subsequence if needed, you can assume that Sn, the difference between Tn and Tn plus one is um, large, so it's going to infinity. So I claim that TSN of uni infinity is converging to uni U infinity. Again, I'm following the proof in Fadi's book and Fadi's paper here. I'm trying to respect you know, the, the ideas. Uh, it might look a little bit confusing to you, but um, if you check back, everything is hidden in, in that sort of key point. Okay, um, so let's prove this one quick. How do we prove this? Well, we are using triangle inequality. Um, so we're going to show uh, show TSN U infinity converging to U infinity by triangle inequalities and uh, the the contraction property. Okay, um, so I'm comparing the two. Ts and u infinity minus u infinity, right? So I'm using triangle inequality. I'm squeezing in this this term, right? This new term. You just squeeze it in and use triangle, and then I write t t n plus one as t s n composed with t t n, right? Because that's exactly a t t n a minus t s n, and the other size I just keep it, right? I mean, this is just that term I kept. Um, and uh, for the first uh, first uh, term here, uh, you know, I am using the contraction property, right? Because I have, if it runs in time, TSN of F minus TSN of G in L infinity, the contraction mapping tells me that property tells me that it's less than equal to F minus G in L infinity. So the, the you know, the, the difference is being kept. We proved this one, this is very simple. So then it's less than equals to uh, TTN of G minus U infinity plus this one. But we know that, uh, we know that, um, you know, UXTN converging to U infinity, right? UXTN is nothing, but this is exactly TTN of G, right? Because that's a G is the initial data. So, so because of that, we have this conversion. So we are done. We are done with proving, um, proving. Uh, so so uh, just we get the TSN of U infinity converging to U infinity. But recall that we just claimed earlier that S maps to TS U infinity is decreasing, right? So on one hand, I can find a sequence going to infinity that TSN of U infinity converging to U infinity, but on the other hand, the whole sequence is decreasing or non-increasing. So for this to happen, we must have that um, TS of U infinity is always equals to U infinity for all S greater or equals to zero. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's exactly claim four. Um, no, I mean the starting of claim four. Okay. Um, so this this really means that U infinity is a stationary solution to the PD, right? Because um, because if you write out the equations, uh, this means that the time derivative is zero. So this implies that U infinity is a solution to our ergodic problem. That's exactly the proof. Uh, so it's not easy to prove the super solution property, but it's there, right? So at the end of the day, now I'm ready to, 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 to get the, um, uh, the, um, the final claim about, about the conversion of the whole sequence. Uh, the idea is this, so you have already that you have a sequence zero, T1, T2, Tn, stuff like that going to infinity that you have U X T N converging to U infinity. Okay. Then to prove it for the whole sequence, you just need to see that you know for any point, like uh, for any time t, here right. So t is going to be squeezed in the between of some t n and t n plus one. Right. Oh wow, well, maybe 
including this, doesn't matter. Okay, then, you know, um, uh, so the last point is that then we're gonna see that u xt minus u infinity, our infinity, this can be written as um, uh, t of tn, t minus t n of u tn, right? So um, I'm thinking of just a Cauchy problem running for a little short of time, t minus tn, right? Um, so that's exactly the uh, semi-group property, whatever, minus uh, t of t minus tn of u infinity. Why so? Because u infinity is a stationary solution, right? So I can just write as uh, using this property. So writing u infinity as t of t minus tn of u infinity. And now I'm using the contraction mapping, or I mean the contraction um, property of the semi-group. Uh, so this is less than or equals to u tn minus u infinity and l infinity, and this converges to zero. So we are done. Okay. Uh, this is quite lengthy, um, but I want you to keep in your mind this 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 remarkable idea. Uh, I, I I think it's really really beautiful. I um yeah I mean. <laughs> It might look very simple, but again, given uh, 38 lectures that we have done before, maybe it's not that simple. Okay, so let me pause for questions or concerns before I, 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 I tell you the my, uh, one of my other open questions that I believe is interesting. Questions, concerns? So as I said, I mean, this framework, again, for those of you here, I know at least two of you here who are working on uh, force mean curvature flow or on coagulation fragmentation equations, they are really important large time behavior results as well. It's not at all in this framework, it's totally different, but it's good, I mean, like, uh, or maybe the other question is that, can you connect those other framework with this framework and make it better or whatever? Okay. Yeah, and and uh, and I, uh, to me at least, I think this open problem of quantifying the t epsilon in terms of epsilon is quite important. Um, not just that you are solving that problem, but you are creating a sort of a framework to better understand the the behavior. Okay. Um, so let me tell you the other open problem. Of course, I mean, the, the first open problem seemingly need to be done first. Uh, the second open problem is, um, um, so uh, open problem two. Is that, uh, what is the rate of conversion of u x t minus u l infinity x in l infinity in terms of t. Uh, this is also open. And let me tell you my belief, um, maybe I'm not yet uh, detailed enough or I haven't thought too carefully, but my belief is that, uh, so my, 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 my belief is that uh, the rate of uh, two problems uh, can be as low as one wishes. So, you know, the conversion rate can be really slow if things are not nicely mis mixing. Um, but but then you know one need to one needs to point out a good set of, of really interesting examples to 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 answer those questions right and then the the second belief that I have uh, is going to be that um, under certain 
nice assumptions. We can we can probably quantify those. Um, I don't believe that we can quantify those easily uh, or are getting optimal rates, but at least certain quantifications and certain ways to understanding better the 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 the, the, um, the limit and the process is, is really important. I mean, again, this is not just problem solving, but it's getting beyond this, this already very interesting theory, right? You know, like uh, you're going one more step further, right? We have well postness of, of PDE or you know like existence of optimal curves and stuff like that. Those are be belonging to well postness. This weak hand theory is getting one step further of understanding the invariance and the ergodic property. And then I believe that there's another step going further to sort of like it's hard, right? But um, you know, to to tell us like uh, matter more finer properties maybe i'm too optimistic but okay questions concerns all right so uh great if there's no concern then uh, we are done for the day um we have one more lecture to go i'll, I'll try to also give you a certain more than a about things and again you you can see that uh it's quite open-ended um uh don't don't feel worried if there are too many questions i mean i am also overwhelmed with too many questions all the times but who knows right you know i'm not asking myself to solve it today or tomorrow i mean maybe 10 years down the road i have some ideas who knows you know it's, it's sort of like something quite a long shot. a lot of things that are quite long shots i mean not not like uh, problem solving Okay, right. Thank you and uh, see you on Wednesday.